Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Welcome back to another video. And yes, you're all messaging me. Not all of you. Not all 68,715 people. But it feels like it because you're watching the news. You're seeing the articles online. And they're all about how horrible EV is failing. How horrible electric vehicles are selling. You name it. From the Cybertruck being a potential disaster with tons of rust and other issues that are surfacing about that truck that people are paying a fortune for to the Rivian which has been deemed one of the biggest cash burns billions of dollars being just incinerated the belief on Rivian I watched a video yesterday was that that company has zero chance of ever ever turning a profit but here's what happens with these companies when they go public. CEOs still going to get paid. C-suite executives are going to still get paid. Board of directors are going to get paid. All kinds of shareholders are going to get paid. But I'll tell you right now, especially the top end, early end shareholders are going to get paid. And then that company is very likely to completely become incinerated. There's only so much cash they can keep taking and keep getting burned. They're losing I think it was $30,000 per Rivian truck that is sold, they lose. And to be able to break even, even if they went to full max production from their giant factory out of the Midwest, they would still be losing money. So the only option for them, like many of the EVs out there, is that they would have to raise the price beyond what is already a stupid price for these cars, already too expensive, to be able to reach a place of profitability but that would slow or stop sales, which is pretty much already happening because those cars are piling up along with all the other EVs out there. If you want a Mach-E, I'm pretty sure they're pretty close to saying just we'll give you two for one. Anything you can, anything they can do to get rid of the Mach-E's. Everywhere you look from Tesla lowering their prices, dropping their prices to, to move more cars, completely screwing all the existing Tesla owners who just bought cars at certain prices, and then just a few weeks later, they're a lot less. I mean, there's nothing about there's nothing about the EVs that are redeeming qualities. The fact that the vast majority of the electricity being used for these EVs is coming from fossil fuels anyways makes the whole situation even more laughable. Go watch my good friend at Jetter's Garage his video I'll put it in the link below where he talks about he owns a Tesla he talks about the 10 things he hates about his Tesla and I'll tell you or his EV and I'll tell you that his 10 things are better than any 10 things I've ever seen online they're so articulate and they're absolutely on point they're not just oh well you know my door handles are weird it's like everything he shares he does a full-blown breakdown goes and watches how long it takes people to fill up their cars compared to how much it takes to charge up their EVs at a supercharger even and then the argument that everybody says oh we're going to uh, the technology is going to improve and and as it improves we're going to be able to get these cars that are going to be able to charge in minutes and they're going to be super reliable and super cheap and price will come down just like they have for anything let me just throw this out there a little wake-up call cell phones cell phones are not getting cheaper the iPhone has not gotten cheaper. The iPhone continues to become more expensive almost every single year that that thing comes out. It certainly is not going down in price. And you get incremental, if any, significant changes to the phone that couldn't be done without a simple software update. So you have the same exact phone that they sell you. They tell you it's faster. They tell you it's got better battery life. And then you get it, and then it doesn't have either of those things yet you paid the same or more than you paid for the last thing. That is a good example, how long the iPhone has been out for, for it to simply become way more expensive every single year. Now an iPhone costs more than most laptop computers out there. Things do not get cheaper. They aren't get cheaper unless they get worse. When things get cheaper, they tend to get worse. Now, we can go back and talk about flat screen TVs and VCRs and Blu-rays and how all those things, those things slowly changed significantly and significantly improved as well over time. And they were mass produced products that were extremely cheap and frankly, I want to say almost com commodity like 
because they went that you went through them so fast. They weren't things you had to finance for five years. We're talking about a car that's going to cost you fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, a hundred thousand dollars that you have to take to the dealership to get fixed when it breaks. Has battery degrading issues. Has all kinds of maintenance issues. Doesn't run well in the cold. I mean, I can keep going on and on. The biggest thing is, as the car gets older, the depreciation is significantly worse than any other car because the thing that makes it run does not last forever. Meaning the battery. Meaning at some point you've got to replace the battery, and the battery costs as much as the entire car. But they're, but the, but Brad, they're improving technology, and technology is going to get better, and they're going to get better batteries. We've had batteries. For a hundred years, we've had batteries forever, and the best we've been able to get today is what we have today. At this point, I will tell you, I will predict, come up from a complete layman's position, that the growth in battery technology is going to be minimal and incremental over time, and they are not going to overcome most of the significant issues that exist. For example, the car is not working well in cold. Not being able to tow without burning your battery life; these things are all problems. Having to sit at chargers for much longer than it takes to put gas in the car. I'm gonna also say this: I have no problem with EVs. I think having an electric vehicle option is a wonderful thing. It's spectacular. We should progress as a society. We should allow people to have their choice of an electric car. But I don't believe we should eliminate the choice of having a gas car, a gas engine. And allowing other options, other power options, whether it be hydrogen or other things, to hit the market. We should be allowing people to choose what they want to drive, because at this point, the gas engines have become so incredibly efficient that the same issue that the electric vehicles have, which is being charged by using fossil fuels, has to be acknowledged that they're not saving much money, and at a certain point. As the gas engines, which have tremendous and have shown tremendous shift in technology and ability to get massive, massive gas mileage with things like hybrid powertrains, kind of lay out the foundation that there's a chance that if you put an EV up against one of these super ultra modern hybrid vehicles, that the hybrid vehicle is likely to do less damage to the environment than the EVs. So for all these reasons, outside of I forgot the infrastructure, which is horrible, I had to navigate my parking lot at one of my offices. I'm literally moving one of my offices, and one of the factors is because the property owner got talked into putting three or four electric vehicle chargers in the direct opposite parking spaces where we had seven or eight parking spaces. It's now been eliminated down to. I think it's three chargers and down to two extra spaces. And every single day, it's not about. They said it'll only be three chargers, so don't worry, Brad. It's not going to be a big deal. Only three, three, three chargers. So three, three spaces that actually ended up being six or seven spaces. But that's all. So you don't have to worry about it. It's not that big of a deal. It's not going to clog up your parking lot. What about all the people that are sitting in my parking lot waiting to charge their car? Sitting in the parking lot in their EVs, a guy in one of those Hyundai Ionic things, sitting in front of the front parking space of my office, not coming in to do any business, but waiting and waiting and waiting. And next to him is a Tesla. Next to him was a BMW electric thing. And they're waiting for the other people to leave those chargers. Why don't they just go to another charger? Because there isn't that many out there, and they got to wait for those cars. Because if they leave, they're going to die on the side of the road and have to get flatbedded to go get charged. So these are all problems. Sorry to interrupt the video, but I've got to share this with you. I just saw this online, and I thought I got to fit this into the video. So I'm just cutting away real quick to share this with you before I do the final edits on the rest of this video. But check this out for perspective. I'm going to read this to you. This is awesome. It's hilarious and it's absolute common sense, and it kind of goes in the flow of how crazy our world is right now with all the the strange stuff taking place, like this push on EVs. So imagine we lived in a world where all cars were EVs, and then comes along a new invention: the internal combustion engine. 
think how well they would sell a vehicle half the weight, half the price, that will almost quarter the damage done to the road. A vehicle that can be refueled in one tenth of the time and has a range of up to four times the distance in all weather conditions. It does not rely on the environmentally damaging use of non-renewable rare earth elements to power it and uses far less steel and other materials. Just think how excited people would be for such technology. It would sell like hotcakes. <laughs> Could you imagine if things were reversed? Gas cars would be the most revolutionary technology to ever hit the planet Earth. But instead, we're devolving. We're going backwards. Less of everything for way more money. All right, back to the video. But then Biden steps up and says, which is what I mentioned when I'm starting this video off about, is Biden administration considers slowing key emissions rules a potential blow to EV growth. If you think there isn't phone calls and conversations happening between lawmakers and every car manufacturer on the planet, except Stellantis, because Stellantis doesn't go to things anymore. They don't go to car shows. I don't think they go to these meetings because they're still thinking, time to go. Uh, what is it? Uh, push forward or whatever. Dare forward. We're going to go all electric and by 2030 or whatever the hell it is. But yet Ford, GM, and every automaker out there is going, this EV thing's a bunch of crap. Even Toyota, this EV thing's a bunch of crap. This is not working. I can't sell these cars. Like I said, mach -E's. We're going to be using mach -E's for Christmas decorations next year. There's not enough people who want these things. Yet Biden comes out and says, well, we're considering slowing key emissions rules. It's because the manufacturers are screaming, going, we're screwed. We've got so many of these damn cars and nobody wants them. Nobody wants them because they're impractical. Hertz says, we don't want EVs. We're getting rid of these things because nobody wants to come in and rent an EV and spend their whole vacation at a charging station. This is a serious issue that we've been saying in the car community for years, and everybody just discounts it with, well, you guys are all just old school. You just like destroying the environment. You just like running your engines all the time. The, 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 you know, all this stupid stuff and killing the, killing the, the ozone layer. And it's, it's just a, it's a weak argument. What we were saying really at the foundation of everything was, um, no, I, I need a car that I don't have to stop and charge. I need a car that I can drive across country. I need a car I can take on vacation with family trips and not spend a third of that vacation staring at a battery charger. I mean, all these issues we've been screaming forever. I don't want to sit in line waiting for people to get out of the chargers. I don't want my battery to go to get cut by 30, 40% because it's cold out. I don't want to deal with having to get my car repaired at the dealership. And once the warranty's up because of right to repair laws, I can't even fix it myself because when I go to AutoZone, I can't find any parts for my EV. So I have to go to the dealership and get ripped off for a spring to get my door handle to work. I mean, all this stuff is, is an issue that's mounting, which is leading to now everybody's screaming and the Biden administration's hearing it. And here's why. Because he knows he's got to try and get reelected. So in an election year, here's a little little quiz. Do you think you can believe anything a politician says in an election year? Here's the deal. First, you can't believe anything they say in any year. But in an election year, the lying compounds. And if you go back, we've all been sold bills of goods by all the politicians. Promises that never come true. Over promises, under delivering. That's how it's always been. Well, now we've got an election year. There's massive pressure, automakers, all those people that build cars are going, wait a minute, um, this electric thing does not have any real good future for me. If I, if, I'm a, if, I, if I work at one of these dealers, one of these manufacturers that are heavy, heavy, heavy um, internal combustion engine manufacturers, so this isn't good. Maybe we shouldn't vote for this. Maybe we should vote for somebody who believes you should have options. If you want to save the planet, go get your EV. If you want to drive a hybrid and still save the planet, you can do that. If you want to buy a stupid Lamborghini with a huge engine, which, by the way, aren't going anywhere, then go ahead. I probably kill less ozone layer than anybody in an electric car because I don't drive this as much as they drive theirs and have to charge it up at the charging stations. So my point of this video is to say, no, because of this article... Because of all this talk about Biden slowing the EV push, that does not mean Stellantis is suddenly going to go, ah, just kidding. 
we're going to keep building Hemis. I know a few people, I think Butter mentioned, maybe, maybe they bring a Hemi, Hemi out next year. You know, I, I doubt it. I can't see it happening. We're talking about a company that is politically so, so opposite of what car people believe in. They are not for these cars on a political level, on a on a level that's not just business. This is an agenda that they have. They are pushing that agenda, just like Subaru pushed their agenda. And you know what? I don't talk politics on this channel. This has nothing to do with it. But do your research and you can figure out that this company is absolutely not out for us. And they do not want to build these gas engines. They want to build electric cars. They're, yes, they're going to come out with hurricanes. And these are going to be cheap, crappy engines. These are not going to be the same as these tried and true beast Hemis. It's not going to not going to be anything that we're all going to be jumping up and down for, but there will be a segment of the world, of the, of the universe, of our communities, of of America that says, yeah, that's a really cool car, and buys it. Or it'll end up being just like the Hornet, which is sitting on lots as decorations all over the place. I hear that no longer do they are they going to use K-rails on freeways. They're going to use Hornets. They're going to line the freeways up with Hornets because there's so many freaking Hornets they can't give them away. You had Coniscus... Love the guy, but he said 14,000 orders. 14,000 orders at Speed Week, he said. The second they announced it, were, were taken. Those were not orders. Those were people reserving to get information. And apparently those people changed their mind because now they can't give the damn things away. So what's my point to this video? Well, just to get right down to it is this is all a political ploy. He's talking about maybe just giving them a little bit more time. But he, he, Biden's not changing his agenda. It is about killing the EVs. And you know what? This ain't a political video. It's just saying that don't believe any of these politicians. None of them are telling us the truth. The fact is, is that if he gives a little bit more time, it's because there's massive financial pressures and political pressures on him right now to be taking such a hard stance on something that's not working and failing at such a grand scale. And it's a grand scale. You just need to go look it up, watch the videos, I mean, there's some great ones out there. I'll put some links in the description below for you and read the articles, get deep in, check out the Congo where, where child children are being used as slaves to mine for cobalt. Lithium mines are killing people, destroying countryside. This is all stuff that nobody wants to admit, nobody wants to face, nobody wants to even recognize exists. But here we are, Biden saying, we're going to slow, we're going to slow this down a little bit. No kidding. It's bigger than him. It's bigger than all the politicians because we ain't buying them. Nobody's buying them. Even the people who want to save the world are going, this is too big of a pain in the ass. I need to be able to go to work, back, go to dinner with my friends, and then if somebody wants me to go hang out with them at their house, I can't say I can't because my battery's dead. I got to go sit at a charger for 30, 40 minutes, or I got to go put it at home and Uber to your house. I mean, none of this stuff <laughs> makes any sense. So with that, everybody, I don't think you got any chance until Stellantis decides to hopefully spin off CDJR, sell it to an American company that will revive it, bring back something worthwhile. They could have put a lot of effort into making the Hemi way more efficient. There's thing, They've already done a great job so far, but they could have built a, a great hybrid. I mean, Ferrari's doing it, Lamborghini's doing it. It's not hard to do. It does cost money, but they're spending money on concept cars and and crap that they shouldn't be spending money on. And, and Hornets saying if they build the Hornets, they'll be able to build the fun stuff. Well, we're still waiting for the fun stuff. They say in March we're going to see the fun stuff. I'm not I'm not really excited. That fun stuff sounds like a bunch of EV stuff. And frankly, I'll just tell you straight up, if I was to go buy an EV right now, I would go buy a Tesla Plaid. Why? It's tried, true, proven. But then you have to buy tires every month because the car is so heavy that it, that it melts the freaking tires off when you're driving. I mean, it literally burns the tires off when you're driving because the car is so damn heavy. Just another problem I thought I'd throw out there. <laughs> you think these cars are heavy. The EVs are ridiculous. So if you can afford tires every two or three months, maybe four months, you can stretch it out, uh, so be it. But if I was going to buy one, I'd buy a Plaid. I'd buy the fastest, fastest one out there. I don't think there's anything out there beating that thing so far. But I don't want one. This is what I want. I love a beautiful ice car, big engine, a lot of noise. And amazingly, I'm sitting in a car with the naturally aspirated v10 it's a supercar and i'm averaging over 20 miles to the gallon so if they could make this monster that's almost 
what, 10 years old, get 20 miles the gallon, you better believe they can do some amazing stuff with, with the traditional gas engines, as they already have. So with that, everybody, keep holding your breath. But the only, only way out of this is that Stellantis sells that CDJR off. And I think I'll, I'll wrap up with this is all we got to do, all, they, all we got to make sure happens is they have a couple really bloody quarters, a really cu couple bad quarters, which I got to imagine, I'm watching close, that the first quarter and second quarter should be horrendous for them because they don't have anything to sell and everything's overpriced. If that hurts, if that hurts them, unless all the stuff they're selling in Europe and across the world keeps them going, then maybe if Dodge, Ram, Jeep, Chrysler all starts to just bleed so badly financially that they decide, screw it, there's more value in the brands than there is in owning the brands and selling the cars, then maybe they'll sell that off to somebody and you know what? Everybody says, well, it's just a pipe dream. It happens all the time. Look at all the times it's been been sold before and all the times automakers have been sold. It's nothing new. Hell, I think it's Lamborghini and, Lamborghini and Rolls Royce and all them has been owned by a, so many people I lost count. So Land Rover was Ford for a while. Then it was BMW, I think, and Jaguar was Ford. I mean, everybody changes hands. So who knows what can happen? And I think that's the solution. So with that, everybody... Hope you enjoyed this video. Just some information. I don't mean to take away hope from you, but it is what it is. Politicians lie. Ain't nothing going to change anything. We're not going to see any big Hemis from Stellantis, that's for sure. So with that, like, subscribe, comment, share this video with anyone you think would benefit from it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.